welcome to Anglesey for round 16, 17 and 18 of the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. We had some fantastic racing last time out at Snetterton. Race winner Sam Smith, you're starting in fourth position here at Anglesey. Can you carry on with what you did at Snetterton? I don't know, it's not going to be easy. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with the track. Uh, the, the pace is definitely there. We seem to be lacking the one pace speed, but over the distance I think we're going to be okay. Uh, but I've got teammate Mike Comp with me here this weekend back in the Mark 1s for a bit of fun and uh, he seems to be the one I'm worried about the most as it happens so uh, just try and work together and try and get, get the cars onto the front row for the next one really. Interestingly for you, Will, the championship leader, is starting behind you. This gives you a great chance to eat into his points lead. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he'll be behind him in a few corners though. He's, he's quicker than he qualified. I mean, I was out on there with him yesterday and I think he just had a bad lap in qualifying but he will definitely be able to watch it. Fantastic. Well, we wish you all the best in the first race. It's over Thank to Richard John Neal to take you through the rest of the grid. Thanks very much, Lloyd. Sam lining up fourth, front row and pole, Josh Jackson. John Langridge alongside, then Mike Comber and Sam Smith completing row two. Row three, Ollie Allwood and Martin Tolley. Brian Trott and Will Blackwell Chambers on row four. Roger Shaner and Patrick Lay next from Jason Greatorex and Charlie Burge. Row seven, Teddy Clark. And Paul Tucker, Matt Pickford and Clive Powell's on row 8. Row 9, Ben Hansey and Stephen Foden. Anthony Hutchins and Richard Collins, row 10. Sam Gendy and Simon Orange on row 11. The grid completed by Simon Brittle. That completes the top half of the entry. Remember, we split the entry into top and bottom half from qualifying. And they fight it out from there on in. The lights are on. Out go the lights. Watch for John Langridge in white. Looks like pole, but this is a left-hand first corner. And Josh Jackson looks good. Mike Comber looks good as well. From third on the grid, slots in in front of John Langridge. So they're side by side. Will Blackwell Chambers, championship leader, on board with him. Looking at Martin Tolley in 23. But it's, it's Jackson, the leader, followed by the two teammates, Mike Comber, and Sam Smith, who've got ahead of John Langridge to go down into Church Corner for the first time. These cars make a super sight. And for the first time in a long while, we are on the Anglesey International GP circuit as Ollie Allwood goes wide on the grass, kicks up the dirt, gets it back on. Allwood's wide. John Langridge is tight and keeping it up the inside line. Tight line, I should say, not tight generally. He'll get, I'll get some stick for that. John Langridge, though, chasing hard. The 36 car poking his nose up the inside is Sam Smith. And Mike Comber, certainly looking far from race rusty, the 27-year-old race preparation expert from Leicestershire, Thrussington he comes from, running well in P2 at the moment. And John Langridge in fourth place. Look at the views here. The drivers won't have time to stop and enjoy it. They're coming down into the first part of the corkscrew. Now, rather than, they're going left now, rather than going straight right, they're going to go up the straight, which is the... Anglesey International GP circuits. They get a long straight up towards the headbin. This actually uses part of the uh, old circuit here at Anglesey. And then uh, around the hairpin, back downhill towards the last corner. So plenty of overtaking opportunities here. Great view as they come down the hill from that hairpin, past the old pit lane, which is the thing you can see there, the wall you can see on the right-hand side of shot, and into the last corner. So Josh Jackson's made a great start. Lots of fighting going on. Patrick Lay in 175 coming under pressure from Jason Greatorex. The 94 red car is Charlie Burge, the man from Haverhill. And they go around turn one and head up towards the banking once again. Turn one called target. Turn two called the banking because it is banked. And having a look up the inside line is Ollie Allwood. Can't quite do it. You really don't perhaps get the perspective of the banking from our camera angle but it does give drivers the opportunity to maybe take a different line, maybe not as wide as the one we saw there. And the car's heading down into Church, which then climbs uphill in towards Rocket. Watch this wonderful, fast, sweeping section of racetrack here at Anglesey. I'm surprised that more people uh, don't come to Anglesey in some ways. I mean, it is we're very well used, but it's a well-kept secret, really. Some of the bigger championships would do well. Look at the climb here. Great shot of how the cars have to climb up into the rocket complex. They go left, then they go right, and it's a long right, then a little bit of straight before they come out of that corner there. That's the exit of rocket now, going still uphill very slightly into Peel, and Peel named after the late, great DJ John Peel, who did his national service here on Anglesey, and uh, did come and watch the racing as well in, in later years. So there's Martin Tolley, one of the lead master drivers, the 23 car. Martin 
fifth in the championship standings after our Snetterson round. So, great battle here, and it's Ollie Allwood under pressure from Brian Trott with John Language at the moment, about a quarter of a car length back. He's going to, well, he's not going to have a look as they come into Rocket, but he's putting Trott under pressure. Brian Trott also all over the back of Ollie Allwood. Language gets closer on the second part of Rocket. This is for fifth, sixth, and seventh positions. Josh Jackson still leading from Mike Comber. Comber has the fastest lap of the race. And he's chasing Jackson hard. I wouldn't say it's a, an outright battle for the lead, but certainly cat and mouse between the top two. And cat and mouse between these three for fifth place. John Langridge, who started on the front row of the grid in his first full season of BRSCC Mazda Championship action, is running well. Sussex driver having a fair old trek to come here and race. And he's thinking about having a look up the inside line now of Brian Trott can't quite do it but he's putting the pressure on Trot really the man in the difficult position here because he's, he doesn't know whether to attack or defend and then immediately ahead Oliver Allwood third in the championship on 1140 points 11 points down on Sam Smith and 42 points at the moment down on Will Blackwell Chambers which is approximately half a race win because it's 100 points for a win. Talking of Blackwell Chambers, there he is, coming under pressure from the man who challenging, challenges him in the championship standings as Smith looks up the inside line to try and take third place as they go through the banking, heading down to church, but Blackwell Chambers in blue has more momentum out of turn two and holds on to third place. That is all over, effectively, all over two points because each position that you gain you're going to get two points out of it 100 points for a win 98 for second and so on and so forth but if you get fastest lap you grab two points for fastest lap and at the moment that's with Mike Comber the second of the two cars almost in shot Josh Jackson here is the leader and Josh uh, this is not new territory for him he was a double winner you might remember from our Silverstone coverage races two and three so Jackson being harried by Mike Comber. Comber's got fastest lap. So just to tell you, I was talking about championship points. Jackson will get 100 points if he wins. Comber will get 98. But with fastest lap at the moment, Mike will bag an extra two. So he'll get the same amount of points as Josh Jackson here. Jackson is fourth in the championship, only 10 points behind Oliver Allwood. And Allwood at the moment in fifth. So this is going to haul Jackson up, to, up towards Allwood in the championship table, which is all important. I won't go into drop scores because they do complicate things a little bit, but a driver will drop his or her worst three scores over the course of the year. That That is effectively like doing away with a round or not having to come to one of the rounds, although to by and large three races at each event. As the race leader, Josh Jackson goes down for the last time into target turn one, the left-hander, which is why pole position is on the left-hand side of the grid. Jackson here has driven very well indeed. Annexing pole position, good start. He's looked in his mirrors, he's seen Mike Comber behind. Comber on his best lap, of course, has still got the fastest lap. That was back on lap six, just after half distance here. This is a 20-minute race, great BRSCC format as ever. And Josh Jackson, really looking good. Wonderful to see them racing on the full Anglesey International GP circuit. Great for the fans here. It's a long, long lap, 2.1 miles. Does miss out the second part of the corkscrew, which I know the drivers enjoy. Up to Rocket for the last time. And Josh Jackson in 72 looks like he's going to hold a man from Bexley in Kent. And looking at his sequence of results this year, had a disappointing first two meetings. But since then, two wins and then a second, second again, third, third third second and third so he's, he's hardly been off the podium once he got into his stride this year he's had a, a very good run and of course momentum is what you need in a championship if you have a disappointing first round put that behind you it can it can soul destroy some people but it hasn't done with Josh Jackson who comes down into the final turn Comba closing up but Jackson really has this one under control there's the chequered flag Josh Jackson wins round 16 of the championship here on Anglesey Mike Comber second from Will Blackwell Chambers. Sam Smith is fourth. Fifth place is Oliver Allwood from Brian Trott. John Mangridge next, that trio battling hard. Amended result though because Sam Smith excluded sadly. So it was Jackson from Comber, Blackwell Chambers, Ollie Allwood fourth from Brian Trott and John Langridge. Then Roger Shano, Patrick Lay, Charlie Burge, Jason Greatorex completed the top ten from Paul Tucker. 
Martin Tolley, Stephen Foden and Ben Hansey. Steady Teddy Clark is 50 from Sam Gedley, Richard Collins and Stuart Brittle. Joining Group B for race two, Anthony Hutchins, Matt Pickford, Simon Orange, Clive Powers and Sam Smith. Josh, fantastic race, lights to flag victory, but it wasn't easy out there, was it? No, nah, it sounds easy, but it, no, it wasn't easy, lights to flag. But no, Mike kept me almost honest. I couldn't get away. He couldn't get closer to me. So, now we enjoyed it. It was good. Bit of, uh, bit of interesting weather there towards the end of the race. How are you expecting that to continue for the weekend? Yeah, tomorrow looks worse. So, we'll see what happens. It wasn't ideal, though, getting into the last corner, uh, last lap, and it's starting to rain. Mike, fantastic second place here in race 1A. How do you feel? I'm oh, delighted, yeah, really happy. Um, I've been doing the Mark 3s this year so far and uh, we've been struggling a bit with it. Um, and last year I did the Mark 1s and did three out of three wins here uh, in the five club race. So uh, I just thought, you know, I've got the option, the car sitting in the garage, do I bring it out or not? And yeah, glad I did now. <laughs> Will, fantastic third place, probably not what you were expecting given your starting position. No, um, absolutely wonderful first lap. Uh, quality was quite a hard one, didn't expect anything like that from the first lap. Coming out in fourth, um, absolutely stunned. I mean, luckily, I think people were holding each other up, but um, if the hole's there, I'll definitely uh, see if I can get through it. The brief shower we had at the end of the 1A race has disappeared as the 1B cars get ready to go out onto the grid. Oliver Robinson starts in pole position. Richard, it's over to you. So here's the grid pole position to Oliver Robinson from Patrick Collins. Courtney Milnes and Adam Craig on row two. Max Norfolk and Clive Chisnell next from Ivan Leary and Adrian Burge. Then it's Spring Griffiths and Jason Taylor. Charlie Rawls in 11th from Simon Woods. Michael Close and Nick Ledoyen from Dale Whiteman and Paul Austin row eight. Row nine, Jake Stiles and Russ Lindsay. Russell Jones row 10 with Paul Hughes. Joseph Norai and Adam Bessel completing the 22-car grid. Well, this is the second half of the entry. Race 1B, so effectively round 16B of this year's championship. Blue skies in the distance. When we look the other way, still a little bit of cloud coverage. Hopefully, there are the clouds moving away, moving away off the grid in fine style. Is Patrick Collins who gets the better of Oliver Robinson off the line. So Robinson being challenged as well by Adam Craig and Courtney Milnes. It's Craig on the outside line, the white car with the yellow. Courtney Milnes and Max Norfolk in the all-yellow car, not the all-yellow car we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at Joseph Norai now in 65. He's made good progress already through turn one at target. I've got to say... Great driving standards here. You watch other formulae here at Anglesey and you tend to get a few incidents coming out, out of that first corner. But nothing. Oh, but going very wide is Oliver Robinson, the front row man. He did the work in qualifying to get a front row, but he throws a couple of positions away there by running wide. Max Norfolk challenging Adam Craig. Norfolk looking for second place. Courtney Mills is next. You can see that Adrian Burge, the blue car with the orange stripe, the 49-year-old from Haverhill, has gone through as well. And Burge looking to break into the A group, looking at Mastrats to try and recall whether Adrian Burge has made it up into the uh, top group yet this year. I don't think he has, so he's in a good position here to do that. Clive Chisnell in the black orange and green 74 car trying to chase down Burge at the moment with Ivan Leary in 25 immediately behind Ivan a driver we've seen quite a bit of this year by and large he won't mind me saying so when he's been at the sharp end of things in the B group races but he's been on the bubble a few times makes it through into the A group uh, but always good to see him racing at the sharp end here's Michael Close who Michael Close missed the last round not looking overly happy looking in the mirrors for Michael Close he's got a blue and green car which may be Adam Bessel coming through from the back of the grid so Bessel on a little bit of a flyer certainly lighting up the timing screens at the moment uh, so Courtney Milnes chasing Adam Craig Max Norfolk now in yellow is up into second that's the yellow car I was talking about on lap number one Adam Craig next then Courtney Milnes from Oliver Robinson Robinson will be kicking himself for that little wide moment at church and we'll be hoping that's not going to cost him promotion into Group 2A or Group A for Race 2, round 17 of the Championship later on. Top five, remember, go up into that A group. 
the way the championship points work I was talking about 100 points for a win in in Group A and the points follow on so there were 22 classified finishes in race one so these guys here and girl are racing for 20 the 23rd place points and downwards from round 16 hope that makes sense for you if you're following it BRSEC said it before I'll say it again a really good race format for Masters they had too many cars so many cars they didn't know what to do with them but they split the entry into A and B groups and we see the B group cars the, the uh, second half of the grid as it were racing amongst themselves and the top cars as well it uh, it saves the lottery in all honesty um, and it means you know we do get some quick drivers in group B from the start of the meeting and indeed the other races but I think it's an absolutely magic format where you got it's a great problem to have isn't it having too many cars to have in one race the BRSCC deal with it well here we are on board with Michael Close working hard and Michael another driver who we have seen in the A group didn't make it last time out last time we saw him was Alton Park and didn't make it up into the A group then but was in group A at Silverstone for the two races and here's the race leader so this is coming down the straight into the last corner Adam Craig putting Max Norfolk under a little bit of pressure now so a good battle on for second place Patrick Collins is away and down the road in the 99 car the man from Isha in Surrey this is only the second time we've seen him in the B group this year so could perhaps be of expected uh, to pull away and joining this group now we've got Burge look at Burge round the outside line coming into the banking I said there were different lines there and Burge proving me right Bryn Griffiths in blue is immediately behind him and Adam Bessel it was Bessel coming through the field in the blue, white and green cage, green trim car is in the mix as well from the back of the grid. Bessel lighting up the time screen with fastest lap coming through. He's about to put Burge under pressure here. Burge is uh, going through on the inside line there of Clive Chisnell. And it's a good move there from Bessel who's on the outside line coming up into Rocket. This is going to be brave. Is he going to hang on to it? He does. Wonderful move by the driver of the 123 car. Adam Bessel was off the back of the grid, working his way east for sure. If he keeps up this progress, going to join Group A for race two. And that is exactly how this format works. You can start off the back if you're quick enough, get through the field in Group B, join the A, the A group runners for the subsequent races. Absolutely brilliant. Ivan Leary piling the pressure at the moment on Bryn Griffiths. As I said before, really good to see this international GP circuit in use this weekend. So Michael Close running well, chasing Simon Woods, the Orange 101. Woody the man in front at the moment. Here we come into the left-hander, past the, the pit lane entry. And Mike Close fighting it, gets it all back. Well done, Michael. Quick look in the mirrors to see if anything... Uh, is happening in behind which clearly it is he's got drivers behind him but really good awareness through target now up on the run into the banking wide line here get a, a better view really of, of, of the actual banking itself from the onboard here with Michael Close Michael comes from Ashington you might remember took a class or group B uh, podium in round one that was at Brands Hatch did the same at Silverstone as well so certainly used to being up at the sharp end of things but a little bit away from where he would want to be at the moment in this race. There he is, the 117 car, and the, the machine immediately behind him, Russ Lindsay, who comes from Hampton Court, piling the pressure on. You can see Simon Woods in 101, the man from Sutton in Surrey, the race leaders from Isha, and the uh, man we just saw there coming from Sutton. But we're back with Bryn Griffiths having a good race here with Adrian Burge. These two disputing seventh and eighth position. Ivan Leary in behind in ninth. Then it's Clive Chisnell who completes the top ten. Simon Woods is in behind them at the moment. But here's Patrick Collins coming towards us with Adam Craig now up into second. And Adam Bessel is in third place. Super drive from Bessel, not only into the qualifying positions, but onto the podium of this Group B race. What a race it's been. And across the line goes Patrick Collins again. 2.1 miles to go here on Anglesey before he wins round 16b remember it's for 23rd place points in the round but he'll be just delighted to take a checker and also to move up into group a where he'll be looking to make more progress the car parked up there 
I think on the outside was Nick Le Doyen, the only retiree so far in this 20 minute race. And again, great driving standards here. Good prep as well with just the one retiree. And when you think we've got in excess of 40 cars, we're getting on for 50 cars making the journey to Anglesey this weekend. That super entry and uh, some good weather as well. We've had a little bit of, of dodgy stuff as well. By and large, all good so far. Patrick Collins there, Patrick's best lap so far, 151.163, averaging very nearly 70 miles per hour. Adam Craig, not too far behind him. Craig has got into the 150s, so he's been slightly quicker on his best lap, but he hasn't been able to get up on terms with Patrick Collins, who goes down into the corkscrew, go on to the international loop for the last time through the left-hander effectively two long straights and a hairpin to do and one more left-hander after the second long straight so they're heading away from us now so the 132 car of Jason Taylor coming under pressure here from Paul Hughes Taylor and Hughes dicing for 16th and 17th place and uh, they make it through the hairpin but the race leader is Patrick Collins still there from Adam Craig Adam Bessel is in third place it looks like Oliver Robinson has made it into the A group for race two Max Norfolk is going to be fifth and join that group as Patrick Collins takes the checker he's got the win Collins from Craig Adam Bessel in third place great drive from the back Oliver Robinson fourth Max Norfolk there's Bessel going through Oliver Robinson was fourth from Max Norfolk Courtney Milnes just miss, misses the cut in sixth place Bryn Griffiths in seventh position, so he'll be in Group B as well in race two. Then Adrian Burge, Ivan Leary ninth from Clive Chisnell. Adam Bessel, incidentally, as you can see, getting fastest lap as well. Eleventh goes to Simon Woods from Michael Close, Ross Lindsay and Paul Austin, Charlie Rawls next, Jason Taylor, Paul Hughes, Jake Stiles, Dale Whiteman, Joseph Muroy, and Russell Jones completing the finishers here for round 16B. Patrick, congratulations on the victory. It looked like it was a tough race out there. Actually, it was. Oh, thanks very much. It was, it was a lot hotter, I think, than it feels standing here. It was, um, temperature was rising all the time. And uh, the laps didn't feel that quick, actually. I don't know if it's changing conditions or what. But, uh, no, it was really good. Really enjoyed it. It kept me honest the whole way. Um, which was a little bit worrying, especially towards the end. I saw it catching up on me. But um, no, it was, it was a good race. It wasn't easy. It was hard work. But um, I'm pleased to be up in the A's for next time. Adam, congratulations on your second place. That was a fantastic drive through the field. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite a quiet race. There was the uh, first couple of laps, a few overtakes, and then I was sat behind Patrick for the whole of it, just desperately trying to uh, inch towards him, but it uh, wasn't to be. Adam, congratulations on your third place there. That was a really storming drive. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I think I was a bit out of position because my uh, transponder didn't work in qualifying, so I think I should have been in the A race, really. But, yeah, that was good fun. Really put, good. put you into the A race later on, and what can you do from there? I don't know. I'm not sure if the times are there. I've just checked the data, and I'm not sure if the times are there, so we'll see. Hopefully mid-pack in the A's in the next race and then hopefully get at the end for the last race. Second day for the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship and as you can see the weather is changing here at Anglesey. The two A cars are about to go out for their race. Hand you over to Richard to take you through the grid. Thanks very much, Lloyd. Pole position to Josh Jackson from Mike Comba. Then it's Will Blackwell Chambers and Ollie Allwood, row two. Brian Trott and John Langridge follow them from Roger Shano and Patrick Lay. Row five, Charlie Burge, Jason Greatrex, Paul Tucker, Martin Tolley from Stephen Foden and Ben Hansey. Teddy Clark and Sam Gendy, row eight. Richard Collins and Stuart Brittle, row nine from Patrick Collins, moving up from Group B with Adam Craig, as do Adam Bessel, Oliver Robinson and Max Norfolk. Interesting to see how much progress Bessel can make through the field on this one. Coming through the back of the grid, remember, in Group B. What a VRSCC Master MX-5 story that was. On board with John Langridge. Lines up six on the grid on the outside line. Makes a good start as well. Langridge looking immediately at Ollie Allwood in front. But they go, you can see, very slightly uphill, climbing into target. The inside line there is Brian Trott, so Trott goes past. Language goes on the dirt just a little bit, keeps his foot in, though, keeps his cool. It's Josh Jackson 
out front at the moment. Now remember the red and white cars are going to be easily identifiable in this one because there's only one. And basically that's Mike Gomba. So Mike uh, with uh, his team excluded from race number one is going to be a favourite for race 2B. Round 17 of the championship or race 17B. But it's language at the moment looking at the back end of Ollie Allwood. Big scrap on for second position as Brian Trott puts the pressure on Comba. But now here comes Ollie Allwood and John Langridge round the outside line. Will Blackwell Chambers in 43 in the mix as well. Then we've got Patrick Lay in 175 in the mix too. What a super start this is to our second A group race of the weekend. It is cut and thrust at the front. Blackwell Chambers gets on the inside line of John Language. Patrick Lay's going to follow suit as they go through Peel. Good few people parked up there and able to watch the action from the comfort of their cars. It's a, a big 2.1 mile circuit for the race fans to spread out around here. Onto the GP loop for the first time. So Blackwell Chambers, really good shot. This man leads the championship, Will Blackwell Chambers. And that gap... It's got bigger now from Sam Smith with his, his exclusion from race number one. And Blackwell Chambers knows that the run into the end of the season is all about consistency. He bagged so many race wins. He bagged the first four wins of the year. Second place round five. Win again in round six. Hasn't won since then. But he hasn't needed to, to be fair. He'll want to, for sure. But he also knows that he needs to get points finishes. Jason Greatorex in 33. And he's being chased by Patrick Collins in 99. And the outside line is Stephen Foden in 77. So Foden and Collins having a very good dice of it at the moment. Patrick Collins has made some good progress up the field here. Remember, he was in Group B and won that race. And at the moment, looking safe to stay in the group for the third and final race of the weekend. There's Mike Comber still trying to hunt down Josh Jackson out front at the moment. So Jackson... And Comba go on to the last lap in front. Third position is Brian Trott. Then Oliver Allwood and Will Blackwell Chambers. These two are clear and pulling away up towards the banking they go. You don't have to go tight to the apex as we've mentioned before. And Jackson looks like he's going to make it two wins on the bounce. Ollie Allwood looking threatening for third though. And very racy at the moment. Allwood's got the fastest lap of the race. That was way back on lap four, Ollie Allwood. So he, at the moment, looking to pick up those extra two points. And that could haul him closer to Will Blackwell Chambers. Blackwell Chambers immediately behind him. So effectively only dropping, well, four points if the fastest lap comes into play. As well as the race leaders go up the hill for the last time. Mike Comber chasing hard. Now Brian Trott is, has been passed by Allwood, but Trott gets it back. Super move. Great piece of Mazda racing between these two. Brian Trott loses third place, gets it back from Ollie Allwood. Good, clean, fair racing between the pair of them. And can Trott hold on? Now you can see Allwood giving him very close attention, exiting Peel, downhill into the left-hander. First part of the corkscrew and onto the GP loop again. It is still... Jackson and Comba out front here and they're heading up into the hairpin for the last time. Let's see whether I don't know whether Comba's got anything in reserve here. Still half a length or so down. In fact, if we get side on almost a length, you can almost squeeze another car in between the pair. But Comba chasing hard. Downhill past the old pit lane here on Anglesey. It is still Trot in third place. Allwood, Blackwell Chambers there. Then it is uh, John Language and Patrick Lay, but coming up to take the chequered flag, it is Josh Jackson from Mike Comba. Jackson wins, Comba second, Will Blackwell Chambers third. Exclusions, though, for Jackson and Comba, meaning Brian Trott takes the win from Ollie Allwood, then Will Blackwell Chambers, John Language next from Patrick Lay and Roger Shano, Martin Tolley seventh from Teddy Clark, J uh, Charlie Birch ninth ahead of Jason Greatrex, then Patrick Collins, good drive from the back to 11th, then Paul Tucker, Steve Foden, Adam Craig, Stuart Brittle, Oliver Robinson and Ben Hansing, Richard Collins next and joining Group B for race three, Max Norfolk, Sam Gendy, Adam Bessel, who didn't finish, Josh Jackson and Mike Comber who were excluded. Well, there's certainly a change in the weather on its way as the cars line up for race 2B in the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship. Anthony Hutchins on pole position. Richard, it's over to you for the rest of the grid. 
Thank you, Lloyd. It is Anthony on pole. Matt Pickford alongside row two, Simon Orange, and then Sam Smith. Row three, Courtney Milnes and Bryn Griffiths from Adrian Burge and Ivan Leary. Fifth row, Clive Chisnell and Clive Powells. Then Simon Woods and Michael Close on row six, followed by Russell Lindsay and Paul Austin. Charlie Rawls, row eight, with Jason Taylor. Row nine, Paul Hughes and Jake Stiles, Dale Weitzman and Joseph Milroy from Russell Jones and Nick Ledoyen. Nick joining Russell Jones there on the back row of the grid. Nick, the only retiree in race number 1B. The lights are on, ready for our fourth helping of Mazda action here on Anglesey. Away we go. A good start from Matt Pickford and also Anthony Hutchins. And coming up to try and take the lead, though, is Sam Smith. Perhaps as we would have expected, Smith goes through and into the race lead. Courtney Milne's there in treble seven, busy chasing Matt Pickford at the moment for fourth position. Again, a great start by everybody. There in car number 60 is Nick Ledoyen coming up from the back of the field and making progress on board with Michael Close, this time looking back. So, Michael here being chased by Simon Woods. Simon, uh, and a driver who by and large we see in Group A. So he's going to be keen to get into the top five here. Move back into that A group for race three. But it's Sam Smith, the leader, Hutchins in second. Then Matt Pickford is in third place. Making progress in green is Clive Powell's. Michael Close following them. And on the outside line, Clive Chisnell in the black, green and orange car. But he's having a good dice with Russ Lindsay, who looks up the inside line in 17. You can see Simon Woods in 101 immediately behind as well downhill into the corkscrew and then they'll be off away onto the GP loop once again. Chisnell on the outside line and uh, flicks back in. Well, conditions difficult and you, well, that is very much proof of how difficult slippery things are getting out there because on the last lap, Sam Smith goes very wide indeed at the banking, but such is his lead that he not only rejoins, but rejoins well in the look at the gap that he's got over the others. So Sam Smith on his way to victory here in the 36 car. Sam, of course, treble winner at Snetterton. He won round five of the championship at Cadwell Park as well. But that exclusion in race number one, putting him back into Group B, that is a big dent in his championship hopes. But... He's responded very well to that. Goes through Rocket for the last time. It's Clive Powell's running in second position. We've got two retirements in this one. Courtney Mills and Ivan Leary, sadly. So they will remain in Group B for our third race of the weekend. But it's Sam Smith who heads the field. Really, Billy no mates at the moment. Nobody in touch with him. He very rarely on the international circuit here. Um, get into lapping territory unless you've got multi-class races although Russell Jones you can see is there in the distance Russell learning his craft in the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 but he's not going to be lapped here comes the leader then Sam Smith looking to pick up his first uh, Group B win of the season he'll much prefer of course to be in the A group and Smith had a retirement in the third Alton Park race so that didn't cause him any problem didn't drop him back because you can't drop back a group after the third race of the weekend you start afresh every time we get a new race weekend and there's the chequered flag Sam Smith takes it he'll be back in group A for race three well there was a another amended result Sam Smith excluded again and it was Clive Powell's this man here in green who took the win from Anthony Hutchins in second Matt Pickford in third place after the judicials Adrian Burge fourth from Simon Orange those five going up into group A for race three Simon Woods next from Clive Chisnell Michael Close Russ Lindsay and Bryn Griffiths then it was Jason Taylor 11 from Port Hughes Charlie Rawls and Paul Austin Nick Ledoyen in 15th from Jake Stiles Dale Weitzman Joseph Norai and Russell Jones completing the finishers in 19th position
Clive, that was a dramatic last couple of laps there. Talk us through it. It was. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I had a bit of an incident with uh, Ivan uh, up in the top there. Um, I think uh, he'd just taken his foot off the gas uh, a little bit, and I was absolutely, absolutely foot to the floor. Uh, we just touched, uh, and unfortunately, he just spun him around. So uh, I dare say I'll be uh, called into the clock. But, uh, uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, recovery, uh, it was just uh, picking them off one by one, really. Uh, I could see Sam in the distance, but uh, yeah, he was too far away. <laughs> Anthony, a tough race out there and a little bit of rain towards the end as well. Yeah, it got a little bit greasy with a bit of slidey uh, with the rain, but um, it was a bit lonely for me because uh, Sam Smith was away. Uh, I was I was following him. Matt Pickford seemed to drop back a bit, and then it, the only person I saw was Clive <laughs> coming through. So, <laughs> yeah, but podium, I'm happy with that. Back in the A's, that's where I want to be. Join me as the cars are lining up for the 3A race here at Anglesey, and as you can see, conditions are not improving. If anything, they're getting slightly worse. The wind is starting to pick up, and that's really going to make the racing exciting as the cars battle between each other and try to slipstream to get past. Brian Trott takes pole position. It's over to Richard to take you through the rest of the grid. Thanks, Lloyd. It's dry in the comms box, mate. You need to get yourself up here. Here's the grid. Brian Trott and Ollie Allwood on the front row from Will Blackwell Chambers and John Langridge. Row three, Patrick Lay and Roger Shano, Martin Tolley and Teddy Clark next from Charlie Burge and Jason Greatorex, Patrick Collins and Paul Tucker. Row six, row seven, Stephen Foden and Adam Craig, Stuart Brittle and Oliver Robinson next from Ben Hansey and Richard Collins, Clive Powells and Anthony Hutchins next from Matt Pickford, Adrian Burge and Simon Orange. Filthy weather conditions for our final Group A race of the weekend. Watch for the lights on the gantry. They're on now. A relatively long wait before the lights go out and the drivers will be keen to get this one over. It was starting to rain on the previous race. You saw how things changed in that one with Sam Smith going off the circuit at turn two. Uh, the banking, well, multiply that because it's... Feel, look at the, the uh, rain on the camera lens, the spray that the drivers have to deal with as well. And yet again, all of the drivers through turns one and two safely with no incident. I take my hat off to all of the BRSCC Master MX-5 Championship runners. Great racing. Brian Trott, though, is the leader. So Patrick Lay looking for a different line there in the green, white and red car. Will Blackwell Chambers is second. Oliver Allwood third from John Langridge. And then I think Teddy Clark up into fifth place, the man from Colchester. Look at the choppy sea in the background. And the race leader is Brian Trott. Now it gets a little bit fraught as they go into Rocket for the first time. Martin Tolley in the mix there as well. Teddy Clark looks at the inside line of John Langridge. Clark with the all-blue fronted car, the white and blue car of Ollie Allwood immediately ahead. Patrick Lay side by side with Martin Tolley going down into Peel. Jason Greatorex in behind, but it's Ollie Allwood at the head of this little trio. And John Langridge coming downhill, looking at Teddy Clark, who was who's been in the it was in the B group for all of the races prior to Snetterton, made the made the jump up into the A group at Snetterton uh, and has stayed there. So Clark, very clearly a driver making progress, and he's having a look at the moment at Ollie Allwood, who, remember, is one of the big championship challengers. The top two, though, Brian Trott still there from Will Blackwell Chambers. Trott started pole, Will Blackwell Chambers started in third place. Ollie Allwood at the moment is third, but coming under pressure from Teddy Clark, who's looking very impressive in these wet conditions. On to the last lap. Teddy Clark has been a revelation here. It's so good to see new drivers coming to the fore. And Clark in the wet in the Blendini Motorsport prepared car has driven an absolute blinder. Will Blackwell Chambers, the championship leader, is in second place. and He's going to pick up more valuable points. John Langridge has got the fastest lap, though, back on lap seven. So Langridge will get two points for that. John's running in fourth place at the moment behind Brian Trott. And ahead of Brian, it's Will Blackwell Chambers and this man, Teddy Clark, who looks as if he could be on his way to a first win. What a story. What conditions he's had to deal with in this race. Clark started, I remind you, in eighth position on the grid and has picked his way through. It's been a superb drive and he's at the outer reaches now of the GP loop. Goes downhill. He'll have the 
left hand bend which will bring him onto the main straight and the chequered flag the nerves are going to be jangling I reckon for the Colchester based driver who finishes his sixth race in group A with a win he goes on to the main straight he's got it he's taken the win superb stuff for Teddy Clark Will Blackwell Chambers is second look at the applause from the pit lane Brian Trott in third from John Langridge and Patrick Lay Jason Greatrex takes sixth position then Ollie Allwood Patrick Collins and Paul Tucker Clive Powell's completing the top 10 language fastest lap congratulations Teddy Clark great win for you 11th goes to Simon Orange then Charlie Burge and Ben Hansi Martin Tolly Stephen Foden in 15th from Adam Craig Richard Collins Oliver Robinson Anthony Hutchins and Stuart Brittle completing the top 20 Matt Pickford and Adrian Burge completing our finishers Teddy, what a fantastic result here. You, you must be really pleased with yourself. That was a fantastic drive. Um, I never, ever expected to be at the front of the A race. I spent the first four rounds of the season in a higher car, right at the back of the field, in amongst 50th place. Went along to purchase my own race car. Obviously made a massive difference. With Blendini uh, Motorsports help, it's got me to the front. Um, I want to thank my sponsors, Varley Red Top Racing, Ken and Air Filters, um, AC maintenance services and I want to thank my super wife who's absolutely mega she's mega um, I want to dedicate that race to her well the rain is really starting to come down now as the three B cars are lining up to go out on the circuit it's going to make racing really exciting Max Norfolk on pole position Richard will take you through the rest of the grid Thanks Lloyd, Max and Sam front row of the grid. Adam Bessel on row two with Josh Jackson. Row three, Mike Comber and Simon Woods. Clive Chisnell and Mike Close next. From Bryn Griffiths and Jason Taylor. Paul Hughes and Charlie Rawls are next. Then it's Paul Austin and Nick Ladoya. Jake Stiles with Dale Whiteman next up from Ivan Leary. Courtney Mills and Sam Smith at the back of the field. One has to say, a little bit of a consolation race here for Sam Smith, starting off the back. Ivan Leary and Courtney Mills immediately ahead with their non-finishes in race 2B as well. Look for the lights. There they are. The Marshall, Start Marshall, keeping them waiting a long time. They'll want the race to be over for sure. A little bit of a stalled start there for Clive Chisnell, who gets away. And he's down towards the back of the field, is Clive. So he'll be hoping to make progress from there. As we look back from Michael Close, who's had a good start in 117 already ahead of Simon Woods Woods started on the row in front of him and he's having a quick look to see if he can go through make a move on the outside line you can see Nick Ledoyen in the mix as well uh, in behind really good shot here as you look back you can see that banking but we're going down into church the sweeping right hander and uh, everybody again super starting here I have to really take my hat off to all of the drivers as Mike Comba goes up into second place now Comba in second there is Simon Woods in 101 but it's Sam Gendy in 69 who remember had a fastest lap in group A in race three at Brands Hatch Gendy we were kind of expecting Sam to maybe uh, ha have a better run of things with that fastest lap but certainly could well be in for a decent result here this is the exit of rocket very slightly uphill as they head down uh, in towards the peel bend the right hander dips slightly down at peel and then massively downhill into the first part of the corkscrew so 31 car going through shot bring griffiths then clive chisnell making progress now he's managed to get up ahead of paul austin in the yellow 30 car so the two teammates battling it out here on the last lap of the race. Mike Comber and Sam Smith from the back of the grid. It's Smith in front at the moment. Comber's going to have a look here on the inside line. It's a great move and goes through. But can he hang on to it as they go around the outside line into Rocket? Smith in 36. 158 Mike Comber. Sam Smith's got the fastest lap so far. That was on the penultimate uh, penultimate lap and Smith goes a little bit wide and Comba sees the gap goes through takes the lead 
So it's Comba there. They're really dealing with these wet conditions superbly. It's almost like the red and white arrows here. Formation racing between the two of them. Comba's got in front. Sam Smith's going to try and charge back through on the inside line. Gets his nose in front, but Comba might find a bit more grip on the outside. And that will also lead to the inside on the furthest corner where our camera is now. Let's see whether Smith can get back in front. Filthy conditions for our final race of the weekend. Comba takes a confident line and looking for that grip on the outside line. He's giving his teammate plenty of room and Sam Smith side by side with him now. It's the run down the hill and Comba's going to have the inside line unless Smith can get across. They're side by side. Smith squeezes him. Still leaves him room though on the inside line. They're teeing themselves up now for the left-hander and it's Comba who goes through and takes it. Comba exits the last corner in lead position and he's going to take the win there's the checker Comba wins it Sam Smith in second third place goes to Sam Gendy Josh Jackson is going to finish in fourth place no judicials this time either Comba from Smith and Gendy Josh Jackson next to Michael Close Max Norford six, six from Simon Woods and Nicola Doyen Clive Chisnell in ninth from Charlie Rawls then Jake Stiles and Ivan Leary Paul Hughes next from Jason Taylor, Bryn Griffiths and Dale Whiteman who completes the finishes. And the standings look like this. Will Blackwell Chambers ahead of Ollie Allwood now up into second place. Then Brian Trott from Martin Tolly and Josh Jackson. Charlie Burge completing the top six from Patrick Lay and Paul Tucker. Mike, Sam, that was a fantastic race. Some great scraps there all throughout, but certainly in the last couple of laps between the pair of you. Yeah, no, it was great. I knew, I knew Sam would come through. Um, he's, uh, he's been a good driver in the wet and uh, in the early years in karting and stuff, so um, we do a lot of uh, sort of wet racing at corporate karts and stuff, and yeah, it was, it was just one of them races, really, and once he got near me, it's just... Yeah, well, none of us wanted to eat, uh, each other to uh, to win it. We wanted to be the winner. So, uh, and just at the end, I got the right run and uh, and got past him. He, he made it hard, squeezed me, but oh, it was brilliant. Oh, absolutely fantastic race. And I guess that's a good thing about the uh, the MX fives is that it is close racing. Absolutely, yeah. The cars are very equal as we found out this weekend, and um, yeah, cracking race. And I think we rubbed mirrors about four times in that race. So I couldn't have driven him off the circuit. I wouldn't have done that to him. But no, I think yeah, speed-wise, we're identical. It was a cracking race. Best race I've had all year. That was. So loved it. Well, there's proof that the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Championship provides close racing no matter what the weather conditions. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to you joining us next time when the action comes from Croft.